Everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem reverse integer. Even though this is marked as an easy question, I would say that this is definitely more of a medium question. And that's probably why this question has so many different, uh, so many dislikes. But I don't think it's actually a bad problem. It's definitely good when it comes to bit manipulation. So we're given a signed 32-bit integer x. The fact that it's 32-bit is very important here. We want to return this integer x with all of its digits being reversed. And the only catch here is if reversing this integer x causes the value to go outside of the 32-bit integer range, which is this, then, then we basically want to return zero if that's the case, because we're working with 32-bit integers. If the integer overflows, then we want to return zero. And this is the portion that's actually gonna make the, the problem difficult because we are working with 32-bit integers. And we cannot assume that we can store 64-bit integers or anything greater than 32 bits. That's what makes this question difficult, I think. Because if we just take a look at the standard procedure that we would do, take the first example over here. We have one, two, three. Did you know we can chop off this ones place digit pretty easily? You can do that by modding this by 10. If we mod by 10, we're basically dividing this by 10, except we're getting the remainder, which is exactly what we want. That's how you get the ones place. If I took 123, divided it by 10, what would be the remainder? It would be three, of course, right? So then we can get three. So with this digit, we want to create a new integer, right? So we're going to start our new integer just being three, right? This is the result that we're returning. It's going to be three. Let me, you know, write it down over here, three, right? Then another operation we can do on 123, now that we've processed this ones place, we don't really care about the ones place anymore, right? We don't care about this three. Now we want to look at the next digit, right? So how can we basically chop this digit off? Well, it's pretty easy. You basically take 123, divide it by 10. When I say divide, we're not doing decimal division. We're doing integer division. So when you do integer division, we round towards zeros. If we divide this by 10, we will get 12 because we're rounding down, we're rounding towards zero. So now we have 12. We're gonna basically repeat that exact same step that we just did over here. Basically now we're gonna take 12, mod it by 10, and now we're gonna get the ones place, which is two, right? That's the digit we were looking for. So now we wanna take this two and add it over here, right? Now, how can we do that? Well, we have a digit, we have a value three. So let's take three, multiply it by 10. What do we get? We get 30, right? Why did we multiply it by 10? Because we wanted to shift this three to the left by one, because now we're gonna take this 30, add two to it. Why are we adding two? Because that's the digit that we just computed up above, right? So we add two to 30. Now we get 32, right? So we've almost, we're almost done reversing this integer, right? If you take a look over here, we started with 123. We reversed the first two digits, right? But now we want to reverse the last one, which is one. And that'll be pretty easy. We'll just continue the steps that we've just done up above. So then we'll, at the end, we'll have 321. And then we'll return that, which is exactly what we wanted to do. And believe it or not, we can do this exact same procedure on negative numbers and it works out the exact same. So that's the good thing. The only downside is we haven't covered what are we going to do if the digits overflow. So let me kind of explain that to you, this range that we have to kind of meet. So in the description, they say that if the value goes out of bounds, so take a look at the left. They say if it goes out of bounds from this range, then return zero. Now, what is the value negative two or? 2 to the power of 31 negative, right? Negative 2 to the power of 31. What is that value? Well, you can see over here, this is that full value. These are the digits. What is 2 to the power of 31 minus 1? This is that value. So what if we had a example that looked basically was too large, right? What if the value was too large to fit? What if the value was actually larger than the max value that we can possibly have? What if the value was 2, 1, 4, 7, what if the value was the exact same as this except plus one? You can see that this is the exact same value except I added one. So this is an eight instead of a seven. 
And actually, what if the input value was this? Basically, what if the input value was the reverse of the max digit plus one, right? Th th let's say this was our input value, right? And let's say we reversed it. If we reversed it, this is the reversed value up above, right? This is what we would get. But what we know is this integer is actually too large. This integer is greater than the one up above. So this would not even fit into memory, so we would need to return zero. Now, how could we detect that this integer overflows without actually calculating it, right? Because we can't have this digit. This digit is impossible to have in 32 bits. So how would we detect it without actually building this number, without actually taking this and reversing it all the way to here? Well, that's the trick that I'm going to show you. We actually are, are going to reverse this input digit by digit, except for the last digit. We're not going to reverse. We're not going to add the last digit yet. What we're going to do is once we've reversed this, Right, we have all but the last digit. We're going to check, okay, is this value exactly equal to this value? Basically, all everything from the max digit except the last digit. How are we going to actually get this? Basically, we can take the max digit and divide it by 10, right? Because dividing by 10 will take the ones place digit and chop it off, right? So if we do that, like this, we're going to check, okay, is is our reversed integer equal to this one? Yes, it is, right? It's exactly equal in this case. Okay, and then the next question we're going to ask ourselves is, okay, we're trying to also, we're now trying to add another digit. We add the ones place digit. Okay, so how do we know then if, if the resulting integer is going to be greater than this max integer up above? How do we know that? Well, all we have to do, since we know that this is equal to this, now all we have to do is compare the ones place. Is 8 greater than this integer we have over here, which is 7? In this case, it is greater than it, right? So then we're not actually going to take this 8 digit and add it to here, add it to this entire integer. We're actually going to return 0 immediately. So that's one trick that we're going to basically to basically to detect if we go out of bounds. And it's basically, I just showed you the example of what we would do for positive integers. The exact same is basically going to be true for negative integers, except instead of checking if this digit is greater than the ones place of the max negative integer or the minimum negative negative integer. We're not going to check if it's greater. We're going to check if it's less than because this is a negative number, right? So that's one way we could detect if we did go out of bounds. Another way we can actually check is uh, taking away this final digit, right, this ones place digit, and taking away this ones place digit again. And we do know how to do that in the code, so I won't explain it. But and we were comparing all of these digits, right? And we were comparing all of these digits. And let's say we knew that, yes, we are about to add another digit. We know for sure we're going to add another digit. Then what we're going to ask is, or is this portion down here that I have squared up, is this greater than this over here, right? For example, over here, we have a value, uh, we have a value two followed by eight different digits, right? So suppose this value over here that I have written over here, it wasn't two followed by eight digits. It was a three, zero, 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 followed by eight zeros, right? Then we know for sure this is actually larger than this uh, integer I have up above. Since we know this is larger, and let's say we're adding another zero to it, so now we have nine zeros, then we know for sure it's gonna be greater than the max integer up above, because that max integer starts with a two followed by nine digits, right? We know for sure this is gonna be greater, so basically that's how we're gonna compare it. I know this sounds confusing, right? But to put it simply, if we compare this with this up above, and we know that this is greater, then we know we're out of bounds, and then we're going to again have to return zero. I know this seems really complicated, but let me show you the code and it's actually going to be probably even more simple. This is definitely why I would say this is more of a medium problem, not an easy problem. Okay, so now let's get into the code. And I already wrote out the code because I think it's going to be more easy to understand if you can kind of see the entire structure written out. So 
in most languages, you can find the max integer and minimum integer in 32 bits, right? Th this is the max integer, this is the minimum integer, and I have those coded up above. In Python, the math kind of works out a little bit differently compared to most languages, but I'm basically doing the, w with the following while loop, I'm doing what I explained earlier in the video. So we have our result initially zero, right? We're passed in some integer x. So while this integer x is not zero, let's continue the loop, right? Now we're in the looping phase we're going through each digit of x what we want to do right just like i mentioned earlier we want to take x and mod it by 10 now you would you're probably wondering why can't i just take x and mod it by 10 why do i need this helper function or whatever uh basically because python is kind of dumb it does some unexpected behavior negative one modded by 10 should not be nine in most cases but Python is a little bit different than most languages. In most languages, you can just do the mod operator. But we're doing math f mod to get that digit in Python. Once we have that digit, we're clear, right? Then we want to take x and divide it by 10. You're wondering why can't we just divide it by 10? Well, Python's a little bit weird. So we're doing we're we're dividing it by 10 and then casting it back to an integer to make sure that we can round towards zero in most languages you won't have to do this you can just take x divided by 10 but python's a little bit weird so excuse that so then we we've we have the digit and we took x and we chopped off the digit so that's good Next, we want to do the stuff that I just mentioned, actually, right? So I want to take that result, right? We, we have a digit. We want to add it to the result. But you can see I'm doing a couple if statements before I actually execute this line down here where I'm actually taking that digit and adding it to the result, right? Result multiplied by 10 and then add that digit which is what we discussed earlier. But before I do this, I have to make sure that this is not going to overflow. How can I guarantee it's not going to overflow? Well, if we take the, the current result and we take the max value divided by 10, why are we taking this max value up above and dividing up by 10? Because we don't want to look at that last digit yet because we can't look at that last digit until we know for sure that this value is not going to overflow. So we're going to compare every other digit. So if this result is greater than max divided by 10, then we're going to return zero because we know it's going to overflow. Regardless of what that digit is, it's going to overflow because uh, the, result, the result is already larger than max divided by 10. So that's one case. The other case is if the result is exactly equal to max divided by 10, right? If it's exactly equal to this max portion, except the last digit. And if, if, that's, if that's true, and if the digit is greater than seven, where did I get seven from? Well, basically, this is max modded by 10. If you take this max integer, mod it by 10, you're going to get the ones place, which is seven. So if the digit is greater than seven, and this previous portion executed as true, then we're going to return zero. So that's basically the case if the resulting integer is going to be too large. The bottom if statement is the exact same thing, except if the resulting integer was going to be too small, if it was going to be smaller than the minimum integer we have up above. So if that was the case, then we'd return zero as well. And if, if those don't execute, then we can go ahead and finally take that digit and add it to the result. And then we can, when once the loop while loop is done executing if the result has not overflowed then we can return that result so that was a lot of information but i hope that these if statements are finally starting to make sense and the good thing is once you run the code it is about as efficient as it can possibly be so i hope that this video was helpful if it was please like and subscribe it supports the channel a lot and i'll hopefully see you pretty soon thanks for watching